Welcome to this painting guide where I take you through how I painted some Xandris 4 sci-fi ships including a beam cruiser and negotiator class heavy destroyer. Don't forget to click on the HQ button in the bottom right hand corner otherwise it'll be a blurry YouTube mess. Starting out here I'm just uh, sanding down the edge of some of these bases these are from Ninja Magic, they're the uh, magnetic connector bases which I already uh, previously did a YouTube video on and a review. You can see how they lock in there on the top. That's the heavy destroyer. And that's the beam class, both from Xandris 4 in the UK. The Xandris figures were really pretty clean and sharp as far as the casting goes, but I had to do some minor sanding on them, nothing that uh, you wouldn't expect to do when you were working on uh, any new model. I had a spare can of Tamiya colour spray for models. Uh, it says it's for plastics but it works fine on these uh, metals. I wanted to go with, uh, with a dark grey for the undercoat rather than black. Here they are after they've had the spray coat. Um, I did about one and a half coats on there and they've come out okay in terms of giving them a nice solid uh, undercoat to paint on. Setting the video camera up correctly to enable me to paint and film it at the same time wasn't easy so you'll notice when I start painting that my brush strokes are a bit odd because it's quite difficult to look around the camera at the same time as uh, doing the paint job but uh, bear with me on that. I use a wet palette whilst painting just keeps the paints wet really so you can just drop a bit on there and uh, not worry about it drying out so you don't have to keep going back to your bottles the whole time. I also use the P3 mixing medium and put a drop or two of that into the uh, blend just keeps them really smooth. At the end of the video I've put some stills in of the different stages so if you wanted to study those after you've looked at the painting work done in here just uh, flip forward to the end and pause so you can see the different stages in the painting process. I usually use a size 1 or a size 0 brush. I don't go for the really fine brushes while I'm doing the main bulk of painting. And the reason for this is because I like to load the brush quite heavily with a lot of paint, but, uh, but very thin paint with the uh, mixed in P3 mixing medium. It means you can sort of brush for quite a long time and get quite a nice coating on um, without worrying that the, the, uh, the brush is going to dry up. Painting a thin coat on also allows you to slowly build up the quality of the uh, and coverage of the paint. If, uh, if you try and get it all on really thick in one go, you end up with sort of gloopy uh, lumps on there, which isn't so good. So I tend to sort of build up and then I'll patch it up later on if some of it hasn't gone on quite as well as it could have done. I'm using the P3 Privateer Press paints, uh, eight of their uh, different colours in their range, including the white. Bastion Grey, Hammerfall Khaki, Gun Corpse Brown, Signal Blue Highlight, Signal Blue Base, Sanguine Base, and Sanguine Highlight. The Hammerfall Khaki has been used the majority of the time for the uh, most of the cover on the figures, and that's the sandy colour you can see. I reversed the film here so you can see uh, how the thin layers sort of build up as you put them on, as they're being pulled off here in reverse. The final result that I want to achieve with this Hammerfall khaki colour is just a really good solid um, main coat for the, the hulls on all the three ships. It's just another shot of me slowly adding on the layers of the really thin Hammerfall khaki. Um, it's not very exciting I know just watching someone paint. It's slightly more interesting than watching the paint dry itself. Uh, but as I work around, I do make the odd mistake, but uh, I don't care either, But because I'll catch up on those later on. Again, if you put on thin paint, you haven't got to get rid of the big blob if you make a mistake, because um, it's easy to go over later on. The base coat's starting to come together a bit now. The uh, Hammerfall khaki is sort of layered on nicely, so uh, it's given it a really good solid um, coating. Uh, for me that's the main thing with the figure, if you can get a really good solid base coat, it, it looks good even before you start to do any shading on there, keeping it neat. After the base coat was done on all three ships, I uh, picked up 
some white, mixed it in with a Hammerfall car key. Not much really, just a slight tone higher to uh, highlight some of the panel areas like this one. There's nothing really scientific about the way I paint my highlights on. I just find an area that's slightly raised and, uh, and drop the paint on and just see how it looks. Almost done all of the highlighting now, just doing some final bits along the back. Um, in addition to the sort of bolder, slightly lighter bits, I've gone back on it again with uh, very, very fine lines uh, against the edge of the uh, panels just to bring it into uh, focus a bit. You can see I've sort of made a few mistakes there, but I'm not too bothered. Doing the sanguine base on here at the moment, which is that dark reddish colour, which I'm going to then highlight up with sanguine highlight. I finally add a bit of white in there as well. I know it turns into a bit pinky purpley when you add white to uh, red, but it's uh, it works out okay and gives it kind of a dual effect. I've highlighted up those sanguine areas now to give them a sort of a pinky look. And uh, I've also started to use some of the um, Gunport Brown in mixed in with the Hammerfall Khaki, which I'm doing here to kind of add a sort of darker tone to some of the uh, hull areas, which gives it a sort of panelled look. This is another quick shot of the wet palette, which you can see in action. It's really, really handy having somewhere where your paint doesn't just dry up on you, so you can use it over an extended period of time. Uh, this is the rest of my uh, worktop area and my P3 paints. I'm highlighting up some of the uh, little jewel areas now that could either be lights or, or um, observation panels in the hull. I'm using Signar Blue Highlight over the Signar Blue Base with a drop of white in. And it's really quite hard doing this while you've got a video camera directly in front of you, so it's quite tricky. So uh, my brush strokes aren't as good as they normally would be, but they've gone on there okay. Just doing a bit of tidying up here again with uh, Hammerfall Khaki, where I've uh, maybe wanted to neaten it up. And here I've used a bit of white in with the Hammerfall Khaki to sort of add some more panel stripes on there while I'm at it. This was the last stage really, just doing these little highlights. I also went round and put some tiny white dots on the edges, which you can see on here. It really makes them pop if you put these tiny, tiny little white bits on any corners. It sharpens the focus in a bit. So that's the lot I just now need to uh, put on some matte varnish and they'll be done. So thanks very much for listening in. I hope you got some tips out of it. I, uh, I was certainly bored by watching the paint dry, um, but I'm quite pleased with the result in the end. Um, please subscribe, I hope to do some more of these soon. Um, I'm hoping to work on the Ninja Magic ships as my next project. <sighs> nice cup of tea. I wanted to show you a book. Um, I've had it since 1980 called Space Patrol by Stephen Caldwell. Um, I think you can see it's kind of that old school era 80s style uh, spaceship artwork um, but there's some fantastic ones in there that have inspired me on how I paint and how I look at uh, spaceships. Uh, I'll show you a couple of examples. The pages are all falling out but it gives you a view on that uh, very striking sort of yellow, red and black combination which you see on games like uh, Homeworld. And here's another ship that's in mid-explosion. Uh, again, I really like the detailing, the striping around the cockpit. Fantastic stuff. So if you ever see Space Patrol in uh, a second-hand shop, I'd certainly recommend picking it up if you can, um, especially if you can find a copy where all the pages aren't falling out. <laughs>